Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We finally have the Crypt Trials game mode back into the game. And by completing the game mode, you will unlock the Crypt kit for free. The game mode's actually pretty hard, but that's why in today's video, I'll walk you guys through on how to beat the game mode. So this is a number generator. Whatever number it picks is how many likes this video must get. So can we get 1,188 likes on this video? Go down below and smash that like button. And if you're brand new, subscribe if you're cool. So when you play the brand new game mode, if you go all by yourself, it's a lot harder. So I recommend having a friend. Some spots you need at least two players to move on. Get at least one person to help you. Every single hour, you only have four tries. If you play with other friends, you can stack your invites. So basically, if I play with my friend Scary Piggy, we have eight tries. So whoever the party leader is, it uses their keys. So here's a quick tip. Create a brand new Roblox account, practice the game mode until you learn it. Once you have that down, then join back on your main account and play the game mode. So when you spawn in, you are locked in first person, but just keep walking all the way straight until you see the gate. Once you're at the gate, hold F. By doing this, the boss will appear. So this part is actually pretty confusing, but I'll go ahead and walk you guys through. But basically around the entire map, there are symbols. Here's an image on screen of what these symbols look like. So you have to find three symbols around the entire map. There are different spawns. If you see these graves right here, do not try and dig them up because if you do that, you'll instantly die if you pick the wrong one. Always on this rock, you're guaranteed to find a symbol right here. For me, I found the dead fish. For the next part, there are different spots, but I'll show you guys where all of them are. For now, just follow me. On the pillar right here, you might see a symbol. You don't have to touch the symbols, you just need to memorize them. On this pillar, you might find a symbol here. The pillar that's lying on the ground, we found the symbol of two hands. If you want to be smart, write down the symbols in the game chat. Our last symbols on the gate by the far end side of the map, we found the sword. My code is the hand, dead fish, and the sword. It is different for every player. You might find a symbol at this church right here, but it's not guaranteed every single time. When it comes to the boss, whatever direction he's going in, do not follow him. Go in the opposite direction. Once he's going away, proceed forward. Once you have all these symbols, go back to the graveyard. Whatever tombstone has all three on there, you must open it. This one has the dead fish, the hands, and the sword. So let's go ahead and dig the grave. And now time for the next section. The next part is the maze. This part is pretty much straightforward, but you need at least one friend to help you with this part. This section has two roles. One player is guiding the light and the rest of the players are following the light. For this part, I was chosen as the light keeper. Wherever your mouse is pointing is where the light goes. If you're playing as the light keeper and see these blue monsters, do not guide the light towards them because if you touch the monster, you will instantly die. So follow the light, you might find a dead end, but if you do find a dead end, then find your way back. If you do this the correct way, you'll make it all the way to the end of the maze, which has the blue dot. If you play with random players, you might fight them troller so just keep that in mind some people might just troll you and have a great laugh just take your time don't try and rush it so when you see the blue dot the player must touch it to move on so if you're not the light keeper here's what to do so when you spawn in you're in a dark alley you have a stone sword and a wooden bow there are skeletons in the maze but don't try and fight them because if you try and do that, you'll waste your time. If you keep running and jumping, you will take no damage. The light keeper will guide your way through, so just follow the light. I did try and fight the monsters, but I just wasted my time. So just keep running and jumping, and as you can see, you're taking no damage. You might get hit sometimes, but don't worry about it. Make sure you trust the light keeper because the light keeper might troll you. Once you get to the very end, you will see the blue dot and now just touch the dot and you'll move on. All right, so for this next part, you need to be very careful. So first go down the tunnel until you see this gate. Now open up the gate. So when you walk forward, there are these platforms. It's a lot like an obby. 
So when he, when he goes to the platform, just jump on each platform. Do not fall in the void. Sometimes the platforms may disappear. And when this happens, just stay still. You won't fall down, but you'll be safe. Once they reappear, just keep going forward. And he made it past the first part of this section. So for this next part, you see these ghosts on the ground. The left side has one ghost. The other side has two ghosts. Since we had three players alive, you need two players on the right side and one player on the left side. If there were only two players alive, you would have one player on the left side, one player on the right side, or both players on the same side. Read the ghost on the bottom and figure it out. But my friend took the left side, so the rest of us go on the right side. When I approach the right side, as you can see, the ghost will glow up. And now we have to open up the gate and move on to the next section now. This next section, we have more transparent rocks, but some rocks are gray. Do not step on the gray rocks, go on the transparent ones. Sometimes they may disappear, just wait it out and keep going on. Now is the last part before the boss battle. This part could be the hardest part for you. When you get to this part, stay to the left side of the wall, hug the wall. Wait for the first two balls to roll down, and when you have enough time, just run as fast as you can to the right side. But when you get to the right side, hug the wall and just follow it. By doing this, you will be safe. The last step is the rope. This part is actually pretty easy. Just hold the rope and you go up. And now on to the boss battle. By far, this is the hardest section and this part you need to be very careful. If you do not practice this, you will die. When you spawn and you have a bow, make sure you have good aim because if you do not have good aim, this will be a lot harder for you. If you have friends helping you out, this will be a lot easier. I believe the boss only has 200 health so just shoot the boss with your arrow. If you ever see red circles on the ground, it means that he's throwing these orbs at you. So when this happens, just run away. Do not try and fight him. You might slow down. If you have the chance, try and fight, but just run away. It's a lot better. When you survive the orbs, he will do this attack where it just zaps you. On this part, you can't really avoid it. You have to take the damage. Once again, he's throwing out the orbs. Just keep running away. Try and fight him when you can. As you can tell, it's the same thing over and over again. But the next part is different. For this next part, multiple platforms will spawn in. On the left side of him, in the air, there will be a specific symbol. Above all the platforms is a symbol that corresponds to the one he's holding. Look for the one that has the exact same symbol that he's holding. For me, it's the sword, so I go to the sword platform. On this section, you cannot fight the boss, just keep that in mind. If you're on the wrong platform or on the ground, the platform will disappear and you'll instantly die on the ground. Once the green ground goes away, you can jump down and keep fighting. As you keep playing, he keeps getting faster and faster, so try and be as careful as you can. For most sections, he will target one player, so just try and avoid it as you can. In this next part, we have these moving walls, so when you see the walls, just try and go through the hole of the wall. If you touch the wall, you'll take some damage. And as you can see, from now on, he'll keep doing the same attacks over and over again, but you have to worry about the walls now. Once again, it's the exact same part with the platform that have symbols. Pay attention to the walls and the monsters coming out. At one point, there will be two walls that intersect each other. Sometimes if you can't make it through a wall, you might have to just go through it. So from now on, he keeps getting faster and faster. This gets so much harder. This next part is hard to explain, but there's two platforms. The platforms have ghosts on them. For every ghost, it equals one player. So if one platform has two ghosts, that platform needs two players. If one platform has no ghosts, make sure you do not go on that platform. Whenever the ghost does light up, it means a player is there. If all the ghosts do not light up, you all die. From now on out, it's the exact same thing over and over again. Just keep repeating the exact same steps. He does keep getting faster and faster, but if you keep your distance, you should be fine. Once all of his health is now gone, you win the game. So if your friends did die, but you're still alive, your friends do not get the badge. We, we got the badge, the emote, title, and the brand new kit for free. So this is the emote, and this is the title. And don't forget, when you beat the game, when you get the brand new kit for free, so congrats to anyone that has the new kit. If you don't want to play the new game mode, I'm giving away two of the brand new kit on my Discord server. Join down below, link down below in the description. Drop a like and subscribe. You start coming out and buying Robux. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>